Hey everyone, in this video today, we are going to be discussing home financing options for 2023. A lot has changed in the market, so we're going to cover mortgage rate buy downs. We've been hearing that a lot. Uh, the current programs for FHA, VA, jumbo loans, and conventional. My name is Joby Slay, and I'm with the Real Palm Beaches team here in Palm Beach County, Florida. We are a full time real estate uh, sales team. And we are here to help you in the South Florida, Palm Beach County area. Um, and right now I'm going to bring in our co-host for today to help me with this, this home financing for 2023 discussion, uh, Evan McDonough with Family Mortgage. Um, hey, Evan, uh, you go ahead, introduce yourself, introduce your team, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into this. Cool. Thanks, Joby. So... Yeah, I'm Evan with Family Mortgage. Uh, we are a local lender here in Jupiter. Um, we do most of our business in South Florida. Um, I mentioned that is the reason that's super important is the agents like Joby and around town really love working with local lenders because uh, we make sure that our clients get taken care of and the agents know that we're gonna close when we work with clients. So uh, we've been around for a couple few decades. Uh, it's a family business. so. I've been around for the past 20 years doing loans and helping families around town. Um, we are a lender, so we have all the great things that the lending industry offers, meaning um, all of our processes in-house so we can really keep up with timelines in the fast-moving real estate market we have uh, today in the last couple of years especially. So I'm looking forward to chatting about this uh, topic and, um, and going through this stuff with you, Joby. <laughs> All right. Hey, great. Thank you. Yeah. And like Evan was saying, I mean, I've used them personally, my family's used them personally. And the reason is because the home financing process can be difficult if you, <laughs> even for the most experienced people, because there's so many moving parts to it. So, you know, getting the best rate, things like that, that's not always the most important piece, right? It, it's, getting to the closing table and know that that deal is going to close. And, you know, I trust Evan and family mortgage for that. That's why, you know, I, I, I refer all my clients to them. So um, let's talk about um, a buzzword I've been hearing this year, Evan, is mortgage buy downs, like interest rate buy downs, mortgage buy downs. I haven't heard this term in years years like you know i was talking to my dad about it because when he had his 18 percent mortgage back in the you know the 80s um that was something that was talked about but recently past decade i, I don't think i've really heard it what is a mortgage rate buy down and how will it benefit our buyers and, and even our sellers yeah <clears throat> so growing up in the business and talking with my father um he talked about the buy downs and how it's coming in and out of the market. And it really comes in and out of the market, depending on what interest rates are doing, because uh, we all got super spoiled with rates uh, for the past really decade plus um, and got used to rates in the fives, fours, threes. Some clients got into the twos. And historically, before that, the average interest rate was about 6%. So when we're talking about buy downs, I want to start with what is the current market and kind of what are we seeing with interest rates going forward this year? And then the buy down part will make a little more sense. OK, um, I was so going to say my first mortgage, Evan, in was six percent, like yeah. almost 20 years ago was six percent. Yeah, my first loan was in 2002 it was six point eight seven five. I was in the business. I thought I was like the greatest thing ever because we had rates in the sevens. Right. And yeah. um, and that was just the norm. But we have a whole uh, new um, generation that has only seen four percent or less, you know, 20 something, 30 somethings. Uh, so that kind of became the norm. Uh, so there's a there's a part of what still makes sense to borrow money and buy homes. And there's affordability part. The affordability yeah. part can be tough because prices went up, rates went up. So that's a real thing going on. But uh, clients can still buy with rates in the sixes and sevens. It's a matter of, of if it makes sense. So I do think that the rates we have today are, um, are going to come down. And uh, just to put it in perspective, we started last year 
uh, January 1st at 3%. Shortly after that, we we're into the fours, the fives, the sixes. By October, yeah. Halloween, we were at 7.5% in general. Wow. Um, and then this graph kicked in over to uh, that we're going to go over. Do you want so, to pull that up? Yeah, go ahead and pull the graph yeah, up. Sure. And what this is talking about is inflation. And my goodness, everyone, whether you are in the business, not in the business, you've heard of inflation this year. And this graph, when they talk about inflation, they're talking about the year over year change. So I'll be honest, I learned more about inflation, how it works this year than I have in the, past, in the prior 19 years of doing this. But we can see that in, in 2021, inflation in August, for instance, was 0.2% super low, right? So then when we go to August of this year, uh, this past year, 2022, uh, inflation was 0.6, so only 0.4 higher, but it's replacing a 0.2 number. So inflation went up this month and we found out about August numbers in September. So in September, rates kicked up even more. Then in September, we had a 6% reading, which we found out in October of 22, and that replaced 0.3%. So now inflation went up even higher. And this is when the Fed really started kicking in their interest rate hikes, right? They started over the summer, really most of last year. So then we get we have the lowest inflation rates we see here in 21. Now, all of a sudden in October, inflation started to kick up in 2021. And instead of having a 0.2% re to replace, we had 0.6%. So then come October, which we found out just a couple months ago in November, replaced it with 0.3. And November replaced 0.5% with 0.2, which we found out in December. So Halloween, we hit 7.5%. In early November, we found out inflation was going down and all the things the Fed was doing was helping our, rate, our, our inflation problem. Um, so then rates reacted favorably, even though the Fed was still hiking their benchmark rate. So that uh, inflation reading started to help mortgage interest rates down. And the thought process is, is now, if we go back to that graph one more time, is we have a pretty decent run of higher inflation numbers to replace. So December, we're about to replace, I believe it's tomorrow, that number comes out, January is 0.6. February 0.5, then we kick down in March, and then we have bigger numbers over the summer. So we're going to uh, hopefully see rates start to trend down where they peaked at seven and a half ish. Pro and I think we have a good chance of being well into the fives uh, by the first quarter, maybe the summertime. Um, so right now we're in the sixes. We're not too far off from the fives. I think in the next couple of years, we could see the fours. Okay. So this this trend we're seeing at the October November part of the graph here 2022 October 22 November 22 where we're getting back to those July August numbers for 2021 where it's 3 2 that's that's a good indicator indicator for the Fed what they're doing's working and that we should start to see them kind of back off of their interest rate hikes which brings some calm back between the mortgage market and what that spread might be between interest rates and that's that's right yeah, yeah. so as the inflation gets under control then the markets will behave uh behave better and that will positively affect mortgage rates now there's like a bazillion things that go into mortgage rates so we're taking one little thing to focus on we still have unemployment, which could change. People are talking about recession, like all these things will affect mortgage rates. But if we just focus on inflation and what the Fed's doing, the Fed's already said we're going to stop doing three quarter rate hikes and go to a quarter to a half. But as long as this inflation number goes down, if they hike at a quarter to a half, it doesn't mean our mortgage rates are going to go up. Gotcha. So the main thing I heard you say in that is we may see rates back into the fives here. And that's the, that's the main thing I heard you say in that for anybody listening, that this is the main thing is that we're, we're not going to see rates continue to climb. They've leveled off. They're starting to come back down. Um, where are like the typical rates right now? It's, it's January 11th, 2023. Where are we right now? Um, just to give an idea for viewers 
of what we're talking about by rates starting yeah. to come lower. So when you hear rates on the news, and what I'm going to talk about is the good credit score, primary residence purchase, um, because you could have a wide variance between second home and investment properties. Uh, but in general, rates are somewhere in the low to mid sixes with some range of closing costs involved. Um, there are some clients who are really low loan to values that could be in the fives right now. So, but that isn't available to everyone. Um, so we definitely are in a much better spot than we were the second half of last year, trending in a positive direction because of these inflation numbers. Okay. So how about we talk about then, you said something earlier about we can get those rates even right now at the 6% where they are now lower, like right now lower with maybe this mortgage rate buy down. Like yeah. what you want to, expand on that and, and share? Sure, sure. So um, the buy downs came back and we started to hear, hear uh, everyone start talking about them uh, at the beginning of last year, probably the first quarter going into the second quarter. And what the buy, interest rate buy downs are is a temporary buy down that you go and negotiate a credit from the seller to um, help buy the mortgage rate down uh, the first year, the second year, and then there's a there's a third year possibility. Uh, so there's two programs. This first one is the two one uh, two one buy down. So the two one buy down says, okay, if my rate today was six point three seven five percent, then in the first year it would be four point three seven five percent. And the second year would be 5.375%. And the third year would be 6.375. And I, uh, this is a 30-year fixed product. So it isn't an arm. It's not a weird program. It is just a, a simple program in that you're buying down the rate the first year with paying upfront money at closing. So the idea behind it really is, is that if we do see lower rates in the future and you want to buy now with a lower payment, you can buy now with, now with the lower payment and be ready to possibly refinance in the future if that opportunity presents itself. So in this scenario, I just used a, a $500,000 loan amount and assumed the client was putting 10% down, uh, which means it's a $450,000 loan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the credit to do the buy down, which you would negotiate with the seller would be just about 2% of the purchase price which is 10,178. Mm -hmm. So this money would go into an escrow account that the lender holds. And every month that you make your mortgage payment uh, in the first year, they pull $561 out of this escrow account to supplement the payment so that your payment is 2247 a month principal and interest instead of 2807 a month. So it's a $561 a month savings the first year by pulling this money out of the escrow account. Wow. The second year would be 288 a month still for the one point savings. So if you kept this loan for the long haul, it's kind of saying, well, what if, uh, cause the flip side Joby, you know, would be, well, let's just go get 490 from the seller instead of a 500. Let's just take the credit as a purchase price reduction. What am I losing out? Mm -hmm. You're saving $57 a month if you held this thing for the whole term. But the idea is you're probably not going to hold it for the whole term. So the 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 loss on borrowing an extra $10,000 into the purchase price essentially is very minimal, but the savings a month is exponential cash flow wise. Gotcha. And okay. the the, the last thing that the super important is, is that the, of this $10,000, it's still your money if you're the buyer, Joby. So if you refinance in 12 months and you paid 561 out of this, you probably have what, uh, uh, three or $4,000 left in that escrow account. Right. That money would come back to you when you go do your payoff on the refinance. So you don't lose all this money like you do with paying points. It's oh. still your money until you use it all up in the buy down or you refinance it and you get it back, whatever's left in the escrow okay. account. That's great. I, I learned something right there um, with that. That's that's an interesting um, 
part of that product with that. Yeah, that, that's that was the, the part I, in all honesty, when I first started looking into this further, it took me a little time to say, oh, well, you're getting that money back if you do pay off in, in the short term. So this is not a product to say, I can't afford $2,800 a month principal and interest. You still need to be able to afford this payment. Um, because we don't want people to be in a loan that they can't afford if rates do not come down, even though there's a strong likelihood they would. Um, right. it is, it is just a way of cash flowing better at lower rates until we see lower rates. So let me just walk back through this. So the right now using 6.375%, because that's about where rates are. So you have to pay to get this two year buy down on this. You need about $10,000 right there. Cause it's about, it's 2%, right? That's of right. The purchase price. So what that does for me year one is it takes the rate from 6.375 to down two percentage points to 4.375 for the first year. Then the second year just goes up by a point. That's why it's two one buy down, right? That's why they Correct. call it two one buy down. And then after twenty four months, it would revert back to the six point three seven five percent. But the idea is that in two years, rates. I mean, we we're saying rates might be in the fives here in the first quarter. But if you don't want to have to wait to purchase a home, you're moving, you're relocating, you want to downsize, you don't want to wait two years, right? So this product lets you do that now, have that lower payment over those first couple of years. And then in 24 months, about that time frame, hey, rates are back in the fours. I can go refinance into that. Correct. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's the that's the the great part for buyers. And so can the buyer because we were talking about the seller paying this, could the buyer just say, I want to pay this money? To, there to are various uh, programs that will allow different um, contributions from agents, sellers or the buyer. OK, um, it just depends on the program. OK. But so most of the time it's being done by the seller and working that into the negotiation. Yeah. There's multiple options. I mean, we've been doing that for years with seller closing cost contribution to help. You know, we do it a lot in FHA VA to help with the closing costs part of it. Cause it might be 10, 12 grand. So we can go get that three to 6% from the seller to do that uh, on that buy down. Can we, so we, when we make an offer, we negotiate that in as part of the, the offer with the seller in our contract. Um, so we do this quite a bit, but now we're saying, Hey, we're going to incorporate this mortgage buy down piece. Now, what if, um, again, it's one of those products, FHA VA and go for the three to 6% because we're talking about two points right now. So can I still say, Hey, I want three points back and, Part of the two points can go to the mortgage buy down and the rest can go towards the closing costs. Yeah, exactly. That's what I typically suggest is, you know, um, a two and a half, three percent credit because that buy down is going to change depending on the client's loan amount. So as the loan amount goes up, the buy down is higher. And as it goes down, it goes lower. That was just at 10 percent down. Um, so a yeah. lot of clients will write it at three percent. 2.1 goes to the buy down and 0.9 goes to the regular closing cost. That's perfect. Yeah. So that actually gives us even a little more ammunition with our negotiations when we go in there um, of what we can do with those seller closing cost credits. And, and even, I mean, this is a, this is a great option for sellers. Like we're telling our sellers, Hey, instead of dropping the, the price, the, the price you want to get, let's offer these incentives instead. Say you are willing to offer these incentives in our listings. So when we put this on MLS and the broker marks, et cetera, we're, we're saying, hey, we can offer this. Our seller is willing to give you a credit towards your closing cost contribution or even a mortgage buy down. And that makes us more competitive in the market because the buyers know right away, okay, I can 
I have a seller I can work with here. Um, yeah. So we're, we're using it as a, as a tool on our, our listings. Um, That's a great tool to have the listing stand out, um, uh, get the property to the game, open up eyes to prospective buyers that haven't seen this yet. Yeah. Did you have another, um, another uh, thing to show on the, the buy down? Yeah, there so that was the, if you want to pop the screen up one more yeah. time, that was the two, one buy down. Now there is a three, two, one buy down um, that, the two one buy down you can do five percent down the three two one buy down you really got to hit ten percent okay. and um and when you say five percent down you mean the the buyer putting five percent down on the purchase price correct yeah correct. Okay. Down payment option so with this it uh, has to at least be ten percent and that is because you need a larger credit so in this you need really four percent credit uh towards towards closing costs now, the big thing with that is, is obviously you're, you're going down to 3.375 in the first year. It's saving 818 on a half a million dollar loan. Wow. And your, your benefit fits five, 561, 288. So this is a huge, huge savings on these numbers. And again, if you only wind up using, you know, um, uh, 10,000 of this, you have nine thousand plus dollars coming back to you on the payoff of whether you sell the home or, or refinance um, also a lot of clients you know will buy a, a home for two three years um, this gives them a great opportunity to save all this all that time and not have to worry about the refinance of the you know closing cost and going through an auto closing yeah because if you if you take this you could you could carve this up multiple ways, but if you took it as, Hey, I'm, I'm paying $2,800, but for the first few years, I'm going to be paying less. But even if I took that extra that I'm saving and just put it aside, you know, I'm just saving that I'm putting it aside in a savings account or whatever. Um, and just pretend like I'm still paying my 2,800, you know, I'm, I'm putting a little pretty good little nest egg aside there. Um, in those first, you know, 24, 36 months um, that I can use if I end up moving or, but what I also like on this is it's kind of a creative way in the negotiation with some of the sellers right now that you're, you know, say buying it for 500, you're, you're competing with someone else out there in the market right now and asking for this credit, but you're willing to pay 500,000 when all these other people are willing, you know, coming in offering 450 and 460 and, and you're still having to compete because we still have multiple offer situations. Yeah. You're having to compete. But if in your mind you're thinking of it as, well, I'm actually getting this money. This is my money that's you know sitting here. So if I only keep this for a year or two, you know, I may have five to ten grand sitting there. So I'm really not buying it for five hundred. I'm buying it for four ninety, four ninety-five, um, you know, four eighty, because I'm getting this contribution from the seller. Um, but in the seller's mind, they're, they're getting in their number, which for some sellers, that's, that's their main thing. They, they want to get their number. Yeah. So it make, makes you much more competitive, um, uh, out there with this. So, okay. Um, yeah. We're coming out of a market where the sellers were able to dictate the game, right? Uh, you know, cash offers, 20 mm -hmm. cash offers, 20 finance offers on a house that's been on the market for three days. I mean, that's yeah. just what it was in our area. And um, that is not normal. And so yeah. the whole industry uh, for us, lenders, realtors, um, and also whether they know it or not, sellers and buyers have to get back to a more normal yeah. market of being creative or being um, able to come up with solutions to have a meeting of the minds. Yeah. Um, because there was a lack of meeting of the minds. It was the buyer doing whatever they could to get the property. Now it's like, hey, let's, Let's both win. That's what a negotiation, a good negotiation. We both win. So yeah. this this uh, this gives the ability for that to happen. Yeah, Steve and I just recorded a, a video just doing uh, looking at the end of 2022 versus the beginning of 2022. And the one thing you notice in that is like the median home price in in Palm Beach County was sale price was three hundred eighty thousand. At the end of 22. It was four hundred and fifteen thousand, so it was about you know the thirty five thousand dollar difference, you know. Um, 
But the asking price at the beginning of 2022, the median active listing price was 450,000. At the end of 2022, it was 570,000. So it was like $120,000 between the asking prices, median ask prices, start of 22 at the end of 2022, but the prices of what things were actually selling had only gone up about 30, 35 grand. All right. So what we see now, when you look at that chart is sellers are still way up here, right? They always lag the market on their, their asking prices. Um, they're still way up there trying to figure out, okay, where are things at? Still asking way above what things are selling for. You know, they're about 150 grand above where the median sales price is, what list prices are. But what we, we explained in that video was sellers are willing to take about 7% less on the list to sale price. So they're willing to go lower than their asking price right now. They're showing it in the data and it's time to get out there for buyers to make offers. And this mortgage buy down option two gives them another competitive option to get out there and make those offers. So yeah. um, that's good. So um, anything else on the, the mortgage buy downs uh, you think people need to know? I think that's it in a nutshell. Um, I, th I find that once someone has a property that they're really interested in and we run the numbers for that, then it starts to really click like, oh yeah, I do like this. And make sure if you are gonna explore this with your agent and, and lender, um, you do it up front because you wanna get it in on your negotiation initial offer, not after you go in on your first offer. Got it. So speaking of that, I was gonna, this is a good segue into this because I was gonna, we're gonna talk about some programs and the products for you know FHA, VA, Jumbo, um, conventional. But even before that, what we're just talking about getting a pre-approval done before you even step out to start shopping. Like you're thinking about going out to look for a home. And we tell all of our, our buyer clients now, we start talking about what they're looking for. They have ideas in their minds and we say, well, you know what you need to do? Get a pre-approval, give the lender, get a pre-approval, not, not a pre-qualification, but a pre-approval, a piece of paper in your hand that basically says you've been approved for this loan contingent on a few things, but we want that document because we want to submit it with our offers. Because again, in this competitive environment, most agents that I work with, when we submit an offer, they're like, where's the pre-approval? Where's the proof of funds? You know, because when I submit this to my client, my seller client, I want to show them that your offer is strong. And this is how you as a buyer can show your offer strong. So what are the steps for getting pre-approved with you and how important is that? So it's, I mean, it's crucial because first thing the agent say is, you know, where's the letter uh, that showed you did your homework. And so I think that the market in general is so first with that after all these years, because the shift started happening about a decade ago, uh, that most are ready for the, the work they're about to encounter. And um, that means that we got to get pay subs, tax returns, bank statements, stuff on their other properties up front, because when they go make their offer, especially with our letter, um, and what's kind of sets us apart from, from a lot of uh, other lenders is that we let the agent know we did our homework. What paperwork did we look at? Have we reviewed it? Have we taken it all the way to initial underwriting? Um, so the pre-approval is crucial for getting their offer accepted. But I will tell you now more than ever is that there is an underestimation of what expenses will be for the buyer or client on the home, meaning that um, because rates are higher, there's an underestimation of principal and interest payment. And even if they went to the internet and they ran some calculators, those most of the time underestimate how much property taxes will be next year. And then you have insurance, which has gone crazy because of all the disasters. So there's an underestimation of that. So um, a lot of times we'll get a, a, a client that calls and, and is experienced. Maybe this is their third or fourth home. And I get into those items and all of a sudden that payment is much higher than where they want to be. And that could be on a $200,000 home or a $2 million home. Everyone is focused on the payment and their expense. So 
So the pre-approval process not only gets you that letter, but gets you in a spot of being educated and knowing what you're getting into when you find the home you want to make an offer on. So the easiest thing to do for that, and we'll put your contact information in the description, everything is to just get connected with you and you have a checklist for them to go what they need to, to provide to you. So they can at least start that conversation because there's things that you end up saying, I, I, we need a little bit more information. We need this, we need that. And you do not want to do that after you've submitted an offer. Like yeah. you don't want to be going to search for things. You've put down a deposit. You've uh, done. An, you've paid for an inspection. You've paid for an appraisal, and then the lender didn't do their homework with you up front. And 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 I've had this happen with buyers making offers on some of our listings, and. You know, I've called their lender and said, hey, is this a pre-approval or a pre-qualification? You know, because I don't want to get in that situation where at the end of the day, because it's not good for my seller and it's not good for them and their client that the deal's falling apart the 11th hour because, oh, the lender didn't do their homework and forgot to ask them for their verification, you know, their pay stubs or something, you know, because they didn't know what they were doing. And that happens a lot. So I actually, you'll, you'll find a lot of experienced agents, listing agents will call the, the lender that you submitted your pre-approval with to verify that they've actually done their homework well. And again, that's why, you know, I'm pretty confident with Evan all the time. Um, here, talk to him because you know what you're going to be able to do. And that's an important thing. I think sometimes the buyers don't know what they can do. So, and a lot of it comes down to that financing. So get that pre-approval done um, so that you can have an advantage over other, your competition, the other buyers in the market. Cause it, cause when you find that home, you want that dream home and you want that home, you do not want to be scrambling around to figure out your lending options at that time. Um, and it so happens yeah. every week. As good as the, the market is, it still happens every week. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then we want to go a step further and preemptively call the listing agents and say, Hey, Joby's a fantastic buyer. We documented everything. If you take our offer, we are going to get this closed, um, and, and be the champion for our clients, um, and be proactive. So that, that also is much appreciated by the agents because it's one less thing they got to do. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse. I think that's fantastic because there's nothing worse as a listing agent, you get this offer, you get it under contract, you're going through the process, and then you have to tell your seller um, the buyer's financing fell through. Because no matter, it could be the buyer, the lender, the, the other agent on the end of the deal, it could be something out of left field. doesn't matter. The, the client, our clients, our seller clients are like, what could you have done to prevent that? You know, even though it may be completely out of our hands, but it's all this stuff up front we're talking about so that we can get you into your dream home and make sure all these things go smoothly for our clients because there are bumps all, all, all along. There's bumps. There's so many people involved. Um, so, yeah, so that's great. Get your pre-approval done. Um, and so let's, let's, I guess, real quickly go over, you know, the pre-approval you can get done for all the products you have. So you want to briefly kind of go through some of the products where they're at maybe because rates are different with different products and even you know you were mentioned five percent ten percent down you know a lot of people with conventional think 20 percent down but it sounds like you know we're getting these five percent ten percent you know fha has always been like three and a half percent but there's other products available with low down payments sure sure so um one of the big changes this year was conventional conforming loans um their loan limit went to 726 200. so that's important for our market uh jupiter north palm beach county because a lot of homes did go up towards the the seven figure number now those clients can get a conventional loan um say that again 726 200 200 they always like to make it even wow because it was like 600 something like a year ago right yeah um Oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank on where it was last year. 620. Yeah, I, that's uh, yeah. 726. 
Um, this is great. Just learn this. So 726,200 is the loan limit, the high. For a regular conforming conventional loan. So that's most of the loans in our country are this product. Um, oh, this so you, product. okay. Sorry. Let me back up again. Yeah. So conventional loan limits are 726,200. Anything above that is considered a jumbo loan now. Yes. So now jumbo yeah. loans are you have to be much higher to get into a jumbo loan. Well, that, I mean, that's great because I mean, last year we were talking about this. I mean, we had a client we were discussing this with where it was, we were trying to be in that conventional range, but jumbo, you know, prices had gone up so much that they were getting kind of hit into that jumbo range. They were going to have to put more money down to stay under conventional, which they didn't really want to do. But now, with them raising this for, and this is for Palm Beach County, correct? Palm Beach County. It is for most of Florida. Yeah. 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 Then for, so now that they, ha, they can put less money down buying a, you know, $800,000, $900,000 home. Yeah. So you have uh, the down payment is a good thing. Now there are some low down payment jumbo loans. Uh, okay. But really, and and the rates between the two right now are somewhat similar. Or last year, jumbo loan rates were actually better than conforming rates, so we did a lot more right. jumbo portfolio stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but qualifying on conforming conventional means you get to underwrite the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guidelines. We all heard this these names before, but what what it really is simplistically is they set the guidelines and make the rules for most of the loans. And uh, for, for instance, they could do a one year self-employed tax return approval where jumbo loans would be two years. Uh, they don't require a profit and loss statement uh, where jumbo loans require a profit and loss statement. So um, all of a sudden, someone that uh, had a great year in 2021, but not a great year in 2020 because of COVID, we only need a one year tax return to, to get approved on a 726 loan amount. Um, also you can do 3% down on conventional loans. You had mentioned down payment options. So 3% down for first time home buyers on conventional loans, not 20%. You don't have to do FHA to get a low down payment loan. If you're a first time home buyer. Now, every other client would be 5% down uh, on conventional loans. Uh, that's second, second buyers, third buyers, whatever. Okay. Um, FHA still, so FHA is a government backed loan, meaning there, if there's a default, there's an insurance policy in place to protect the, the lender. Um, that's three and a half percent down. Those are more costly loans than conventional loans if you have a good credit score. If your credit scores are below 680, then FHA may make more sense. FHA has a lower loan limit while they follow the conventional loan limit up typically, but theirs is lower. And I can't quote the one for Palm Beach County. I believe it's in the fives this year. Uh, I have a little spreadsheet for that. But um, so that's a good option for uh, uh, clients that have a little bit lower credit scores or some other, uh, they have some looser guidelines and some guidelines are a little stricter. Uh, VA is similar to FHA. Uh, it isn't. So VA, uh, the common misnomer is like VA has all these funds and they're lending the money. No, it's all the banking institutions do VA loans and they're backed by the VA guarantee. And VA has some um, extra overlays that we all have to follow, but they really do great for the vet veterans and allow for 0% down. Um, it's, Typically, the rates are a little lower. They might have a little more cost. So not everyone fits a VA loan that qualifies for a VA loan. Yeah. So my my dad did that VA loan with you guys uh, about a year ago. Yeah. And, you know, he had been talking about using his VA loan for years and he had been renting. And then I'm like, dad, like just we're just going to do it this year. Like we're doing it. And he and he was in real estate. Like so he's he's disabled kind of now, but he was in real estate, real estate agent. And so in Port St. Lucie, while it was exploding back in the day, but he said, he's like that, that Evan McDonough and that family mortgage, he's like, that was the simplest 
smoothest process. And this is a VA loan, which everybody freaks out about. It's going to be so complicated. Like we were making the offer. They're like, oh, a VA loan. I don't know if we want to take that. I mean, actually, he was turned down probably on eight to 10 houses before the one we did because he was using a VA loan. The perception of the agents and the sellers were that it was going to be too difficult to finance and close. You close that thing. We got the lending, the funding, everything done. We made the offer. I think you closed it in like two weeks. Well, I think it was a little longer because their appraisal <laughs> takes a little longer, but it was uh, between three and four weeks. You know, it's it's a little upsetting. I think the perception VA loans have because these are our vets and we're trying to do yep. something special for them. And there's this perception of VA loans being tougher. Uh, it's really just because a lot of lenders did a bad job on doing a pre-approval and putting people on the streets to get a loan. They are not that much. They're not like they're not a hard loan. There's exactly. two extra steps I can think of. And that is one. We need a termite report on everyone. I, that's a good thing for the buyer to know if there's termites mm -hmm. uh, and there's a VA appraiser. And the VA appraiser is their own, uh, it's their, uh, the VA's list where all the other loans are a lender's list. So we have no control over the, who's on the VA and they could have a little bit of extended timelines. They're going to comment on safety issues. So conventional loans will always comment on a spot on a wall, but a VA appraiser will because it could be a safety issue. So that's mm -hmm. maybe where the, the, the extra part comes in. But a lot of this time it can be overcome and it's no way, no reason not to do VA loans because they are easier guidelines, um, open to more people. Uh, it's just as an easier qualifying process the, the VA has set forth for vets. So it's not a bad loan. It's just, you know, there's this perception. If you have a clean property, you know, uh, it, it's not going to have any problems having a VA buyer. Well, you gave me my next topic idea for us to do will be VA because that I think we need to take a deeper dive into that for, for the vets and for the agents and sellers out there to understand how that works and why it's so beneficial and why we should be doing it. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll go, we'll go into that, that more later. Um, but yeah, the, the great thing about that, like you said, is 0% down for the vets. It's great. My it worked out fantastic for my dad. So he, he speaks very highly of you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that kind words. Um, the, the only thing I don't think we touched on too much was the jumbo loans, which jumbo loans, um, are typically have more guidelines to get. They're not necessarily tougher. Uh, it's just a little extra paperwork. And again, all of these st bad stories we hear in the industry or why loans are tougher is because the lender missed something up front. So if you have a really solid lender doing the pre-approval, then you're going to have a smooth experience with most of the loan products. Now there's stuff with the property title survey outside our hands, but if you can figure all this stuff up front with, uh, with a good pre-approval. Uh, so jumbo is 726 or higher. There are, you know, 5% down jumbo products up to a certain loan limit. Um, uh, in general, most, anything between a million and 2 million is going to need probably 20% down. Uh, but a lot of, there are 5% down products, uh, you know, less than a million. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Cause a lot of, I'd say a lot of the savvy, you know, wealthier people that have generally been in that million to $5 million range, they actually like to finance their properties and, and have some of that debt. Um, so that, you know, they take advantage of lower rates so that they have their capital to deploy elsewhere. So those are always good products for them. Um, that's uh, good to know. So the main difference really is for being conventional. If you can be in conventional, it's too easier, easier qualifying, easier yeah. qualifying um, for it. But the jumbo options are great too. And the rates are similar. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything else on the jumbo? No, I think um, I think uh, that that covers the you know a brief overview of all all those different products. Now, uh, one thing to mention: there are what, what is called non-QM loans, so quality mortgage. So most of the loans we just talked about fall in the Quality Mortgage Act. Uh, the non-QM loans are like 
bank statement loans, investor cash flow, yeah. um, uh, profit and loss statement loans. So there are those products that have come into the market because um, not all the time does someone qualify on uh, their tax returns because they have a lot of write-offs, but the cash flow is there in the bank statements. So they might be able to get a bank statement loan. Yeah. Um, and these for a lot of people that are small business owners, um, non W two, right? Like they can yeah. Do, yeah. So for all the business owner out there, small business owners, you got that company, you got that business, non W two, these are the products for them, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then like investor cash flow, well, maybe um, you don't have the money, but you want to buy investment, uh, the the income sourced. Maybe you have a billion dollars in a trust, right? And you just don't have that regular Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac income. Mm -hmm. um, you can get investor cash flow and it cash it qualifies based on the property. So okay. if the property's payment is a thousand dollars and you can rent it for twelve hundred, well, that's cash flowing, and uh, it would qualify for that program. Now these all non QM loans all have higher interest rates, so it still is a matter of what makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good that there's there's multiple options and that's the part of getting in there with the pre-approval, having the idea of what you want to, what you're thinking about. So you can kind of grab that program and say, okay, yeah, we have the program for that. You may not qualify this route, but we have this other option. And I know we've done that several times with, with people we've brought in and yeah, this or that may not work, but this might actually work better for you, or we can get you qualified into this property this way. Um, so that's why it's good to start the conversation early. Um, and we didn't really talk, uh, you know, we'll, we'll probably do that on a, another video as well, where we we'll talk about, you know, investor loan financing, uh, for those people that want to buy, um, investment properties, maybe even second homes, things like that, but anything from a one to four unit, right. Fits into normal. Fannie Mae guidelines that doesn't that's not like an investor loan so a duplex triplex quad can basically it's just like a, a, a single family home residential loan right yep exactly now they all have a little bit of adjustments to the rate as you go up over the one unit um mm -hmm. but anything five units or more would be a commercial loan commercial Perfect. okay so yeah so good to know anything in that one to four unit rate can go through a normal residential conventional loan process. All right. Okay. Um, so process, uh, again, talking about the process, start the mortgage process with you starts really with the pre-approval. And then from there, we take it out, we get a contract, we get it under contract, and then you throw it straight into, you've really already talked to the underwriters ahead of time when you did the pre-approval, but now it goes into the underwriting process. And then that's, appraisal um we've already done an inspection generally but you get the appraisal out and that time frame from there could be what three to six weeks generally is how much time we want to give um in in today's market um i mean we're moving a lot, uh, pretty quick uh with our process so i have a, a team that's dedicated to helping people get under contract and be pre-approved and then I have a team that helps everyone get from contract to close. Um, we typically get into underwriting within the first week. We're out of underwriting with anything we need to have as far as conditions. So that's items to get our clear to close. But I mean, we're working that stuff in anywhere from five to 14 days. Um, Jumbo and the non-QM might add another week to that process. But I mean, we're definitely closing, closing in three to four weeks. Uh, which means we're going faster on the underwriting um, because we do, we do so much up front. Yeah. And that's, again, one of the things that has helped us be very competitive with our clients, our buyer clients, and with our pre-approval is that, like even given the example of my dad's VA loan, there was multiple offers on that property. But we said, we had talked about it and they're like, Hey, I can get this done probably in 30 days. And then I called them back and was like, Hey, we're actually going to be able to close early, which they were shocked about. Like they actually thought it would go later. And that's most of the time, like most of the time you're calling me going, Hey, we're ready. You want to close early? And yeah. so sellers love that. 
but being able to go in ahead of time, knowing I can put 30 days on a contract with mortgage financing and be competitive with the cash offers that might be offering, they're, they're still offering, you know, 14 to 30 days, but we may be offering more. And so sellers love that. So it, it makes it very, us very competitive. Me knowing that we can close sooner with you most of the time that you guys are, are going to be, you're on the ball moving quickly. We, we can get this done very quickly. And usually I'll ask you, Hey, how long is the process right now? How long do you think it'll take? And I'll craft my offer based on some of that information where things are right now. Um, Cause usually you're spot on. So that's the other th good thing about working with you with our buyer clients is um, that the speed of being able to get to the closing table and confident that we're going to get there. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, most of our stuff we're, we're ready to issue approval in seven to 10 days after getting the contract. We just have to make sure the appraisal is back in that timeline. So like with your dad's deal, we knew the VA could take up to two weeks. So we couldn't do a approval, you know, for 17 days, let's say, mm -hmm. to give us that time. So uh, we're very involved with helping our agents and the clients put the right number, depending on their scenario uh, for the loan approval. And the sellers really like that. I mean, if you can do a seven day loan approval that goes along with a seven day inspection, it's not a whole lot different than taking a cash offer. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, um, any other thoughts, uh, advice, any, anything else you would tell our home buyer clients out there right now, or anybody watching this video thinking about first quarter, 2023, you know, getting into a home here in, in Palm Beach County, South Florida, any tips, advice, last minute thoughts, um, as we, as we wrap this up. Yeah. So I, um, I don't proclaim to know everything. There's a lot smarter people than I, I have been doing it a little while now and seen multiple markets. Um, and I hear a big concern about values and prices, what's going to happen. And I just think that, um, buying a home and staying in it for five to 10 years, there's very little chance of losing. Uh, but if you're renting right now or something like that, there's a 100% chance you're going to lose on, on the money you're investing with no positive end of the road on that. So if you're renting right now and you have the wherewithal to buy uh, in the first quarter or you're looking at stepping up, at some point our market is going to get more sellers and, more buy and those sellers need to buy. And we're going to see more competition and we never really dropped off like other parts of the country with properties just sitting. So um, the buy down product and, and taking the rates and looking to refinance in the future um, gets you your property now before there's this competition of a very sought after market. Uh, we were we the number one state or number two, three state of, of uh, influx of uh, out of state new homeowners with yeah. North Carolina and something I just read. So, um, we live in paradise. So, uh, I don't think you lose if you're in it to stay in, in the home for the foreseeable future. Now, listen, you buy a home and you're like, I'm going to sell it in two years and one month after I bypass the capital gains with the IRS. I don't know. I mean, could there be a little pullback or could you break even with with having to pay commissions again yeah you could but i think for the bulk of our clients and the people we encounter owning a home selling it buying the new home is the one of the best ways to build wealth um and has, sh has stood the test of time for decades yeah absolutely okay well um Thanks. I mean, I appreciate you doing this with us. Um, and I think we'll, you know, we'll be doing a couple more as we go through the year and we'll also be like we talked about, we're going to go through a, a VA product. Uh, we'll go through an investor loan product later in a separate video. Um, so make sure to subscribe, hit the alert button. You know, if you like this video, like it so that the next time we do one of these, you can be alerted to it. And, and stay up to date because rates are changing daily. Rates change daily. Uh, products don't really change that quickly, right? But rates are changing daily. So 
you want to be able to stay up to date with what's shifting in the mortgage market, what's shifting in real estate here locally. We have all that up to date. And I'm going to put in the description how you can get in touch with Evan and how you get in touch with our team. And if you get in touch with our team, we'll get you in touch with Evan. Um, but how you can get in touch with his team at Family Mortgage and uh, and we can help you with that process uh, A to Z. We got the team here uh, with our Real Palm Beaches team and Evan and his team to help with the, the home financing options. So uh, we can take you take you all the way through. So um, anything else for you, I would just say if anyone has any other topics or things you, you want to see the deeper dive on, then let us know. Yeah, drop that. Uh, put that in the comments. You know, put in the comments what you'd like to see. And we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll set up another video. We'll, we'll do it for you. So just put, put that in the comments and we can talk about other subjects, uh, other topics you would like us to cover. Um, and we've got other relationship um, vendors with, you know, from, from your uh, title company that, that is going to close the, close it out for you. So if you got title questions, um, even the inspectors, you know, if you want to know how that inspection process go, we can bring those uh, those those vendors in as well that we refer uh, to to help with this discussion. So if you need those those people throughout the process, we've got them to help you and, and guide you through. So um, cool. thanks, Evan. Appreciate it. Um, and I'll be uh, thank you for doing this. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. And uh, we'll we'll talk to everybody soon. Appreciate it, Joby. Thanks, Evan.